The secret to having the best training or warm-up routine is having one that is tailored to you. So today, we're going to cover how to properly set up a practice routine to maximize on your improvement. Properly warming up is one of the most important aspects of ranking up. If you're serious about improving, try to make it a habit to go through your training routine every time before you play ranked, and I guarantee you will rank up. Regardless if you're crafting a short warm-up session or a longer training routine, let's get right into how I created my personal practice routine and some guidelines to follow when making yours. My biggest guideline is that you need to cover all your bases. If you're already good at aerials, for example, then it would take quite a bit of work to improve further. Alternatively, if you have no idea how to dribble, then even a little bit of work can take you a long way. It's kind of like imagine an RBG, getting a character from level 90 to 91 is a lot harder than say level 20 to 40. So becoming a more balanced player and working on all aspects of the game is going to get you the most bang for your buck training wise. So I like to break down the fundamental mechanics into three main groups, the ground, the air, and then the wall. And then I break those further down into either car control or ball control. But before that, I always start my warm up with at least three to five minutes in free play. This helps me get back into the swing of things and I can sort of practice whatever I want in here. Then it's time to get down to business. And starting here, this is just my routine, which might not work out for you based on what you're good or bad at. But my main goal in this video is to actually go over how I came up with my routine so you can come up with your own warm up routine that best suits your skill set. Before we get further, quickly destroy that like button for me for the YouTube algorithm. It's been a crazy year for the channel, and with your help, a quick like can help continue that growth. Thanks. As mentioned before, I try to hit all six fundamental groups, but this is also based on your skill level and rank. Not every rank is going to need advanced wall control, for example. So if you need a list on what and how to train based on your rank group, I have a tutorial that goes over which mechanics you should be using at every rank, which I'll link in the description below. In this video, I won't be going over how to perform any of these mechanics, I've already done so in so many other videos. I really just want to focus on giving you a checklist of fundamental mechanic groups to work on and an example on how I like to work on them. But how you actually approach these topics is totally going to be up to you. Out of the six groups, I like to start with grounded ball control. For this, I typically start working on my power first and then accuracy. Once I start feeling good about the contact I'm making with the ball, I'll move on to either a training pack for shooting or an aim trainer workshop map, which helps me take care of the grounded ball control part. After that, it's time for some grounded car control, which usually involves working on some half flips, wave dashes, drifting, and free play, which can really help with your recoveries. But then we're gonna move on to dribbling, which kind of takes both car and ball control on the ground. I personally really like the dribble challenge 2 workshop map, but if you're on console, I also like practicing in a private match with goal reset off and unlimited boost. I found this preferable to free play since it, it's a great way to work on dribbles and the auto respawn on the ball to be slightly faster and more efficient than in free play where you have to reset and drive back to the middle every time. So here I'll work on various types of dribble and as I said before, pick something that matches your rank group. And another shameless plug here, but my dribble tutorial should have everything you need to figure out what you should be practicing for your ground game and it'll also be in the description below. So let's move on to aerials. Unlike the ground game where I started with ball control, I actually like to start aerials with car control. And generally, I like to do a workshop map to get me warmed up with flying, spinning, and cuckster twist. But if you're on console, although it might not be as fun, doing figure eights and different types of drills on pillars and the different maps will work fine just as well. And once you're comfortable with that, it's time to go into some ball control. For this, I really like doing redirect training packs. Since they make you hit the ball in all sorts of weird orientations, it's really helpful when you're trying to practice your aerial control, as opposed to like a normal passing training pack where you kind of just fly straight at the ball. And kind of like with ground control where we switch to doing dribbling which encompasses both car and ball control, double touches are a great way to practice both your ball and car control for aerials. And another alternative you have is doing a backboard bounce pack where you can pre-jump the bounce and then have to make adjustments in midair. The aerial game in Rocket League is vast and you can do so much to practice and improve. So these are just some of the ways that I like to personally practice to try to kind of hit all the major bases when it comes to aerials. The wall is one of the most creative parts of Rocket League and where most players look forward to hitting crazy air dribbles and flip resets. So for the wall, I like to start with car control by practicing all the advanced wall mechanics like ceiling shots, air dribbles, and flip resets. But this is not practical for every rank. I highly do not recommend going for these in a match, especially if you're anywhere below kind of like champ range. It's not so much an issue with you being able to hit them or not, but it's more like these mechanics generally leave you really out of position if they get blocked or if you mess up. 
and that leaves your teammate in a 2v1 situation if you're playing twos. And let's be honest, how many of you guys really trust your teammates to 2v1? Based on your comments, not very much. So that's why I don't recommend this till higher up where your teammates can shadow defend and stall for time properly while you recover. If you're only practicing these mechanics for card control purposes, then go for it, more power to you. I personally loved practicing these at a lower rank because it was a fun way to get more comfortable with card control off the wall. And finally, for the wall, we're gonna get to ball control. And for this, I've mentioned it in a couple other tutorials, but I really like using Pakito's wall shots training pack. But you can do this with any training pack. When I go through this, first you want to focus on hitting wall shots. Wall shots are going to be one of the best ways to score and can really throw your opponents off guard. But as you hit the higher ranks, then you're going to want to practice passing from these wall positions as well, either doing a pass close to you or being able to pass to a teammate across the field. But for most of the ranks, simply practicing shooting from the wall is going to get you the best bang for your buck. And that covers all the main mechanics groups I focus on when training. As I said before, you don't have to do the exact same drills or training packs I do. I'm just trying to provide a list of all the basics that you should be encompassing in your training, but how you actually want to approach each item is totally up to you. Rocket League is such a dynamic game that there are so many different ways to practice and so many different items to practice, and you're going to see great improvement as long as you're working towards becoming a well-rounded player. At this point, this is my warm-up routine. I usually use a stopwatch as well to make sure I'm spending my time pretty evenly between the different topics, and the whole routine takes me about 20 to 40 minutes. And personally, where it differs between a warm-up or a training routine is how much extra time I add at this point, practicing something new that I hit, say, once in 100 tries. Then I don't count that as part of my warm-up, and, and those new things I'm practicing will have to go into the extra training time I've allotted. And finally, to kind of wrap up my warm-up, this part a lot of you might not like, but the first game mode I play after warming up is actually 1v1s to really lock in that warm up. Because if you think of other games like Valorant or Counter Strike, people warm up with Deathmatch, right? Because it gives them a chance to get into more firefights than in a regular match where you might see a person like once a minute and then you die and you gotta wait till next round, right? So 1v1s kind of does the same thing for Rocket League. You just get way more touches on the ball as opposed to like twos and threes where you're sharing your plays on the ball with five other players. So 1v1 is going to be essential in getting you most comfortable whenever it's your chance to make a play on the ball in a 2v2 or 3v3 situation. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this helpful in designing your own daily routines. I promise you, if you practice for 30 minutes a day and warm up properly before you play ranked, you're going to see a huge difference. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I generally do try to read every single comment or come on the Discord. A link will be in the description and feel free to at me and ask me questions there as well. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.